So, in the last lecture, we looked at the linear least square uh, estimation. So, so, uh, so, so basically, we have two types of problems that we often encounter in deep learning. Uh, one of them is called regressions. And the other, as we discussed last time, is classification. Okay? Uh, so regression is, uh, for example, if we are given some data, data points, right? Uh, to try to come up with the best fit uh, for this data so that, for example, if this is a time information or x-axis or, or some other distance or whatever, so that we can project uh, in the near future or even further down the road, which way will be uh, the values uh, of the output based on uh, the given x-axis. So that is basically regression, or in simple terms, think of this as curve fitting. Okay. Whereas the classification, as we discussed last time, is you are given some categories of data. So let's say, X's and O's are one category. X's is one category, O is another category. So we are often looking for what we call a decision boundary. So given an unknown data, so for example, if somebody gave us a point, let's say here's a point, right? Uh, is it a, does it belong to the X category or does it belong to the O category? If the decision boundary is like this, we've already determined that you can easily see this belongs to the O category, right? And very similarly, if somebody gave us a point over here, uh, uh, which category it belongs to? X category, right? Okay, so um, uh, there are uh, uh, proper mathematical uh, derivations uh, based on which we can come up with the best possible regression or the best possible classification. So, uh, so in the last lecture, we developed the mathematical theory behind the regression. Okay, and so there are different kinds of regression, right? The uh, regression that we looked at it, in the last lecture was called linear least squares, right? Okay, what was the idea uh, behind over here? The idea was, let's pretend we want, we are given some data. So we are given some data points like this, okay? And suppose we wanted to know what, um, equation of the curve best fits the data. Okay. So we'll make an assumption. Uh, if, do we want to fit it with a straight line or do we want to fit it with a curve? If we know the data probably belongs to a linear uh, type of curve fitting, so then we'll try to find what is the best equation of the line that will fit this data. Uh, it could also be uh, the data is really a curved type of data, right? So in that case, we'll try to find the equation of the curve, curve that best describes this, uh, this particular data. Uh, so we always start out by picking a model. So pick a model to describe the data. Okay, so for example, uh, let's take a look at the straight line model. We know the equation of the straight line, uh, e equation of a line is axi plus b, right? b is the y-intercept, uh, xi is one of the data points, whatever the x-coordinate is, whatever the y-coordinate is. So we have to find, as you guys saw in the last lecture, determine a and b. Uh, based on the given data, which will give us the lowest possible error, right? So uh, if you recall, uh, what we did in the previous lecture was, 
uh, we set it up as what we call an error function or sometimes we call it the loss function okay and we said uh, given in point xi based on some a and b it will give us a yi right if we subtract yi uh, then that will be uh, our error and because the error sometimes could be positive sometimes could be negative so typically we take the square of this error over n data points uh, n could be 10 and could be 5 and so this is how our loss function or the error function will be described okay so once we have the loss function, once again, remember our goal is to determine A and B. So how did we do it in, in the last lecture? We said, let's determine uh, partial L over partial A, take the derivative with respect to A for this loss function equation, set it to zero. Very similarly, partial L over partial B, set it to zero. Uh, compose a matrix equation. So it will come out to be some matrix A, B equal to some numbers over here. So then obviously A, B is inverse of this part times whatever the right hand side data is based on our data set. So we were able to come up with what we call a closed form solution. So we know the exact solution uh, to the problem um, based on this linear least squares. Uh, so you can see we're taking the square. We are trying to minimize it, right? Okay, so one thing you should remember is the term linear over here, what does that mean? The way it's square. Okay, so that does not mean we are trying to fit it with a straight line. So this is a common misconception people have. They think, oh, linear means we're we are fitting the data with a straight line. It has nothing to do with the straight line. In fact, even if you wanted to fit it with a square type of data, let me show you over here. And that's you know your first assignment. Uh, so if I gave you a data such that it, it, it is a curve, not a straight line, so then what will our model be? Our model will be something like this. Uh, for example, it could be uh, some, uh, let's say, beta 0 plus beta 1, uh, x of i plus beta 2, x of i squared, as an example. So if you, because there's a square term over here, uh, as you can see, if we try to, uh, so in this case, we have three unknowns to be determined determine beta 0, beta 1, beta 2. So can we apply the same thing as we did before? Yeah. Uh, sure. So again, what would be our loss function in this case, or the error function? Beta 0 plus beta 1 x of i plus beta 2 x of i squared minus y of i squared summation over all of our data points because we want to minimize the error, not just for one data point, but for all data points, right? So then, what would be our next step if we were to determine beta 0, beta 1, beta 2? Take the partial with respect to beta 0 for this equation, set it to 0, take the partial with respect to beta 1, set it to zero, take the partial with respect to beta two, set it to zero, so how many equations will we end up with? Three. Three equations, three unknowns, convert it to a matrix form, and find the beta zero, beta one, beta two, right? So this is, what I'm trying to say is, even though, because of a square term, it will fit the model with a curve, it is still called the linear least squares uh, te technique. Um, so the, what does linear mean? Linear basically means in terms of the parameters over here. So if the parameters are simply one at a time being multiplied by the data, uh, and there is no square term involved. So what would be an example of a nonlinear 
uh, uh, least squares technique. Okay. Uh, the example of a nonlinear least squares would be something like this. If our model happens to be, so suppose somebody says, oh, the model will be beta 0 plus beta 1 square x of i plus beta 2, beta 3, or beta 1, beta 2, doesn't matter. Beta 1, beta 2, x of i plus beta 3 square, you know. Uh, so if there's a square term involved for the parameters, unknown parameters, or even if there's a multiplication involved, uh, that's what makes it not nonlinear. Okay. Um, so then, once again, the square term in the parameters or multiplication of parameters will make it nonlinear. Okay. Uh, parameters. Makes it nonlinear. Okay, and here's another mathematics related concept that you should remember is anytime we have a nonlinear optimization, okay, 99% of the time there is no closed form solution. So then the question is, how do we solve it? Because we want to know uh, what, is, what are those parameters uh, for a given data, right? And the answer is, we use iterative techniques. And one of the very popular iterative techniques is called, and we'll be going into good detail on it, is called gradient descent. Okay, very, very uh, useful uh, for neural networks all the time. If we are trying to come up with a neural network to, uh, uh, to have it solve a regression problem or a classification problem, will be using gradient descent technique, right? But in general, as a mathematical concept, if somebody says, um, I have a problem, we can uh, describe it as a linear least squares type of problem. Will there be a closed form solution to it? Yes. Okay, but if somebody says, no, uh, sometimes the coefficients get multiplied uh, to the data, uh, or get squared or whatever, uh, then it becomes once again a nonlinear uh, estimation or minimization problem. And that can only be solved by iterative technique, meaning guess the solution, okay, then go back and improve on it. Okay, so especially in this gradient descent technique, what's the idea? And the typical algorithm goes like this. Okay, estimate values of parameters. Okay. Then we basically for i equal to let's say 1 to n or 0 to n minus 1, whatever, right? So we keep repeating. And what we do is, um, now, uh, as we keep getting better at our deep learning, uh, in any field, there's a certain terminology involved. So you have to follow that terminology so that you can communicate easily with other people. So in the uh, 
artificial intelligence world, uh, whatever model that we are trying to determine that will fit the data, uh, model is referred to as theta, generally speaking. So theta, for example, in this case will mean what? A and B. A and B. Okay, for example, in this case, what will theta mean? Uh, beta, not, beta, beta 0, beta 1, beta 1, uh, beta 3. Beta one, beta two, beta three, beta zero, right? Okay, so that that's the model. So, so the general idea over here is we will do, do theta of i minus alpha times partial loss over partial theta of i. Okay, so this is how the gradient descent algorithm works. Okay, uh, so so once again theta of i. Sorry, I shouldn't say. I is the iteration theta of J. So J is basically, uh, for example, could be 0 to 3 uh, for the example beta 0, beta 1, uh, beta 2, beta 3 as an example. Right? Uh, so theta of 0 is same as beta of 0, theta of 1 is same as beta of 1. Uh, so, uh, so basically, as you can see, uh, we start out with initial theta, meaning some initial guess for beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. And then we go into a loop, uh, keep updating every beta uh, with alpha. What is alpha? Alpha is called the learning rate. So it's usually fixed, but can also be dynamic. We again will go into more detail on it as we go along. So for example, e.g. alpha could be 0 0.5. So, and this is what's called a gradient, as you can see. Okay, so the gradient with, of the loss function, L is our loss function with respect to that parameter, like partial L over partial beta 0 over partial L over partial beta 1, or in this case, partial L over partial A, partial L over partial B. Um, so, uh, so we compute the gradient, multiply it by the learning rate, and whatever the initial value is, we will, so if the slope is, or the gradient is positive, this will reduce, if the gradient is negative, this will increase. Uh, so we keep updating it until it converges. Okay, so that's the fundamental idea in gradient descent. So let me summarize again two important concepts. If it is a linearly square estimation or optimization problem, it's easy. We can come up with a closed form solution by taking the partial derivatives of the loss function, right? If it is a nonlinear estimation problem, uh, or nonlinear optimization problem, then no closed form solution occur, uh, uh, exists. Only way to solve it is by an iterative technique, meaning periodic, go in a loop, keep updating the parameters, and gradient descent is one of the most popular techniques for that. So Professor, when we do the closed form, we involve the inverse. But the in but computing an inverse takes like Sometimes it's big O of n of sure, n sure. cube. So, what is so if you have millions of parameters, so practically, it also be better to use gradient descent. You can also use gradient descent in that case, correct? Um, but generally, you know, like especially if if the uh, uh, regression is involved, your parameters will not be that much. Okay. So the size of the inverse will not be an issue. Okay. Uh, but for classification, as you will see. Um, um, so now let me uh, ask you a simple question. Suppose we create a one neuron network, right? Okay, so in a one neuron network, okay, uh, as I mentioned, the internal structure goes like this. This is the summation, right? Uh, so we will have some input, for example, x0, x1, x2, which will be multiplied by weight 0, weight 1, weight 2, 
And like I mentioned, there's another parameter called bias, where the input is always one, so we multiply this by whatever the B is, right? Whatever's output, let me call that output S, S for sum, because, so essentially, if you take a look at what is S doing, S is doing x0 times w0 plus x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2 plus uh, b, right? So this is the equation for S. Okay, so typically after we produce the sum, we pass it through what we call an activation function. For example, last time I described to you a function called sigmoid, uh, which looks like this, right? So if this is x, this is f of x. Uh, so it varies from 0 to 1. Sorry, 0 to 1. Okay. And so this is what we call a sigmoid. And the equation for the sigmoid f of x is 1 over 1 plus c to the minus x. Okay, uh, so typically we'll pass it through some activation function, for example, sigmoid, so that the output over here varies between 0 to 1. Okay, um, so for, to make it easier, let me assume there is no activation function. So it simply passes straight as over here. So, or you can think of it like a linear activation function, whatever the input is. If the input is 3, output will be 3. Input is negative 2, output will be negative 2, right? So given some data, so these are referred to as x0, x1, x2 as the features of the data. For example, to give you a very simple example, uh, you wanted to know if somebody has a high chance of getting diabetes, okay? X0 could be the height of the person. X1 could be the weight of the person. X2 could be, you know, uh, their blood type or whatever, okay? Uh, so based on this three, so those are the features of the data, meaning different data about a particular person. And the answer over here will be, uh, if it's a high number, high probability of somebody getting diabetes, if low number, right? So if somebody gave us a lot of data for let's say 10,000 people, we know the height, the weight, the blood type, okay? Uh, and they also told us whether that person has diabetes or not, okay? So based on that data, what we'll do is we'll come up with what is the best W0, best W1, best W2. So these are our model parameters. These are our unknowns that we have to decide based on the data. Um, so my question to you is, uh, what do you think? This will be a linear estimation problem or minimization problem or non-linear? Non Thing would be non-linear. Okay. Uh, remember, how do you decide whether it's linear or not? Non okay. Linear? Wait. So, wait, so, wait. so every parameter that we have is it being multiplied with something else, or is it simply being a direct coefficient? Okay. So it's a linear problem. We we can uh, come up with you know just like the uh, previous uh, derivation we did. We can define a loss function. Uh, so for example, let's pretend this is, uh, for a given input, this is y of i, okay? So x0 of i, 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 right? Um, meaning i is the person. Okay, so how will we describe the loss function for this particular scenario? Easy, right? So the loss function you will describe will be L equal to, yeah, summation i equal to 0 to n, um, or 1 to n, whatever, x0 of i plus x1 of i, forgot w0, x1 
cosine of i plus w y minus d of i. I did it. Okay, if I were to follow this x zero, uh, let me rewrite it. So that so exact same equation, right? X zero of i w zero plus x one of i w one plus x two of i w two plus b minus y of i. So what is y of i in this example? So the data, the result, which? So y of i is when we are training it. Somebody will already tell us whether yeah. somebody has diabetes or they don't have diabetes. So y of i is basically expected output. So uh, again, if we put a sigmoid over here, it will vary between 0 to 1. If somebody, based on a given x0, x1, x2, somebody has diabetes, then y of i will be? Well, if they don't have diabetes, it will be zero, right? So once we have defined the loss function, once again, if it is a single neuron system, do we have to use gradient descent? No. No. Okay, because uh, right away as you take a look at the loss function or you take a uh, look at the how the output is being produced, you'll see it's a linear combination uh, in terms of the coefficients, okay? Now suppose what we do is, let me give you another example. Okay, so suppose we do this. And for the time being, let me, let me not worry about the activation function, and this is y, or y of y, or whatever. So when we set up a neural network, all inputs go to a neuron, where it, they will be multiplied by its own set of weights. Then for the second neuron also, all inputs will go also to the second neuron, multiplied by a different set of weights then whatever the output is will feed into the next neuron and so on, okay? Uh, so now my question to you is, again, same diabetes example. Uh, if we were given some data and our goal was to find the model parameters and the model parameters are how many over here? So what's our model over here? W0, W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, W6, W7, B1, B2, B3. Everybody agrees? Because mm -hmm. in the beginning, once again, we can initialize them randomly, but through the training data, our goal is to find what is the optimal value of these such that uh, fits of our training data as nicely as possible with the lowest possible error, right? Okay, so my question to you is, is this a linear optimization problem or a nonlinear optimization problem? Nonlinear. And why? Because we'll have in multiple parameters, like it's already XO plus XOW plus uh, X1W1 plus X2W2 plus B1, 
that whole thing will be again multiplied with the W6. Uh, good answer. Okay, so let me clarify that to everyone. Suppose we're looking at the sum over here. Let's call it S1. So wouldn't that be x0, w0 plus x1, w1 plus x2, w2 plus v1? Everybody agrees? Yes. Great. Very similarly, let's take a look at S, S2. So again, it will be x0, w3 plus x1, w4 plus x2, w5 plus v2, right? Now go over here. This uh, uh, let's call it S3. So what is S3 doing now over here? W6, X1. Isn't it multiplying this thing by W6? W6. Yeah. So now take a look. What what happens to the coefficient for X0? It becomes W0. W6. W6. So remember, as I said, as soon as whenever there's a parameters being multiplied or squared or log or exponent or whatever that makes it a nonlinear problem. So if we were to now come up with the weights for this particular neural network, what will be our technique? Gradient descent. Gradient descent. Okay. So before I come to the gradient descent, there is one very important concept uh, that let me cover with you guys. Um, See, um, by the way, uh, it's just as a general uh, suggestion or, uh, uh, you know, for your own learning, uh, there are literally millions of tutorials available online that you can learn deep learning on your own. They'll give you the Python code. Okay. But very few really go into the understanding or the ex the mathematical explanation of that, right? Um, these days, for example, let's say you're graduating, you're looking for a job in the AI field, they will test you how good is your mathematical understanding. Uh, if you simply show them, oh, I can write a Python program, look, this, you know, is able to recognize uh, lane in a, in a self-driving car, no big deal, but if you, uh, so, so, so just like in our previous class in web development, like I was saying, every high school student can design a web page. What differentiates you between a prof you as a professional versus somebody who's, you know, can, uh, can do also, you know, just like in the software world, you need all the advanced design patterns to implement in your code. Very similarly over here, the mathematics, understanding of the mathematics behind, and the statistics, which gradually I'll introduce to you is extremely, extremely important. Okay, the end result in most cases you will see is very compact, very neat. Even if you didn't go through the math, use the end result, you'll uh, get the job done. But, you know, somebody asks you some in-depth questions or you would, came to an advanced situation, then you won't have a clue how to solve it. So, so that's why uh, first few lectures where I'll be going through the extreme fundamentals are very important. Okay, so now another very important concept that we'll cover today is called logistic regression.